So when we talk about sketching a lean canvas, as I mentioned, I do time box this. So I do say sketch your first canvas in one sitting. You know, don't, don't get up till it's done. So unlike a business model or business plan where you start writing it, you may not have the answers or you have to go look it up or you have to go ask people. Um, here I'd much rather kind of see people do a brain dump of what it is they know today and write it down. It's okay to leave sections blank, and actually that's a very good thing, because when you leave something blank, you're actually admitting that you don't know the answer to that particular thing, which in my mind kind of flags that as a risk area. And that should probably be one of the places you go validate right after you're done, is go and see what can I do next to be able to test that. So there, there are actually two, um, so as we go through this process of documenting your plan A and then talk about the latter processes, uh, I would say that there, there are two kind of skills that we initially we may not be that good at, but we kind of get better at. And one of it is risk identification, being able to identify, given this particular model, what might be riskiest. And I'll talk about how you, how you even get help like identifying what's risky, because we, we are very myopic. We, we tend to look at everything from a technology risk perspective, but we need to figure out like, what in this model may or may not work and try to identify those. But then the second skill that is even more important is then being able to identify what is the smallest thing possible that you can do, again, to minimize that, uh, that learning loop. Um, rather than taking weeks to go test this risk, how can I mitigate it in a much shorter time frame? And that's a skill that is something that people get better with time. And I would say that if you're, if you're a software developer, I would say almost always you can mitigate risks even around features without building, without writing a single line of code. And I've challenged many people to it and showed them how they can, they can actually do it without writing code. And the same thing applies with any kind of product. If you're building, building anything, you can almost always be able to test something around that and test the riskiest parts without expending a whole lot of, whole lot of effort. So I'd be happy to talk to people offline if they have specific examples, but that's, that's a skill that I think kind of is something I want to highlight because it is something that's not obvious and sometimes needs a little bit of practice to get to see that. So going back to the canvas, the other thing that's very important is to think in the present. So when you look at a business, business plan, for instance, they make you look at projections five, you know, three to five years out in the future, which as I mentioned early on, is kind of works in fiction. You're looking at what your office is gonna cost you back then and looking at all kinds of things which are kind of a little silly, but it's, it's really an exercise for you to see if you can, you can do spreadsheet math more than you know, really look and see how you're gonna model the business. So it is important to, to actually model the business because it's, I'm not saying you know, leave, your, leave your canvases blank on cost structure revenue stream. And I'll talk about what you put in here at this stage. But you do want to figure out what are your shorter term milestones and recognize that this is going to still be measured by a much bigger um, business model or a much bigger realization of the business model. And you have to make sure that the business model you're pursuing matches the goals of what you want to build. And that's also very, very, like I don't cast any judgment on the kinds of business people want to build. Some people look at building a, anything less than a $100 million business as a small business. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I think it all depends on what the entrepreneur, entrepreneur's goals are. You know, building a healthy 20 to $30 million business as a two, three person uh, entrepreneur is, to me is, is a highly profitable and highly good place to be at. I take that any day than chasing a $100 million business that has a, liar, that has a much lower likelihood of of succeeding and maybe the same financial outcome after 10 years or five years. <clears throat> and so this is where I, I tend to take a much more simplified customer-centric approach. So rather than looking at um, like the 10 different ways you can tackle the canvas, the only box that I like to really tweak is look at it from a customer worldview. So we'll see that, and that's why I talk about brainstorming your, your customers first. And so for every one of those customers, we build a canvas. And as we'll see, the canvas changes completely um, just by tweaking the customers. But to me, that's the, 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 that's the place that I really tweak. I don't come in from, from any other parts of the canvas. So there is a specific order that I follow. Unfortunately, I didn't create the original canvas or I'd have lined these up in order. <laughs> um, but you know, it's not something you have to memorize. We're gonna just follow that order over here. And we'll, um, we'll also, uh, if you're using the online tool, it's got this numbering on there. So you'll be able to kind of, kind of see that. This may actually be a good segue to just stop since the lunch is here. 